want you to go back to uh, yeah, probably 2000, 2001 year, okay? And the big way people used to listen to music in that time frame, late 90s, early 2000s, was what? Hadn't come out yet. Yeah, at that time it hadn't come out yet. CD. Disc Man. Anybody remember the Disc Man? And maybe at this time you are really, really cool like me <laughs> and used what was called a mini disc. Anybody remember the mini disc player? Not, not a lot, it was huge in Europe, but not a lot of people used them over here. Or maybe you were still a little bit, tiny bit behind the times and were still using maybe the Sony Walkman. The yellow one, you put the cassette in, right? Mm -hmm. So you had those two, the two main ones, the Walkman and the Discman, were the two ways you used to listen to music, right? And, and, and that was how everybody, really, would listen to music, unless it was a radio. You know, which I know some of y'all still use the radio today, right? So that was how everybody used to listen to music. And then around 2000-ish or so, there was this... Start little, you start hearing out of California, there was this a new thing coming out, right? There was this new device that might be coming out. It was this, right? The iPod. Oh, yeah, mm hmm Yeah, this is mine, and it still works, and I still use it to this day. Yes, 160 gigs, it's awesome to have like 40,000 songs at your fingertips at one time, right? But that stack came out, right? And the iPod came out, and everyone said, this is the, 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 the greatest thing. This is the, the, the thing you're going to want. This is the absolute best way to listen to music. And honestly, I, I still to this day think that is probably the greatest music device ever invented. And I have an iPhone X that I have an Apple Music subscription to, and I still use that device sometimes to listen to music. All right? Because that was the greatest thing. That was, that was it. That's what, this is what everybody was starting to gravitate toward, but it was still new. So people still had questions about it. Oh, you know, Apple had its issues of proprietary software, right? You could only use iTunes to put music onto the iPod, right? So there was still only one way to do things, but it was still the greatest thing, right? Well, I want you to think about this, right? I want you to think about the leaders of Apple coming out and saying, you know what, we want everyone to come and buy an iPod, which they did, right? We want everyone to come out and buy an iPod and to get this because this is the greatest thing and this is the only way you're going to want to listen to music. But if you buy it and if you do go get it, everyone's going to start to ridicule you. Ridicule you. Right? If you buy it and go get it, even though it's going to be the best thing possible for you, people are going to start to shun you if you use it. If you buy it and go get it, you might even be put in jail for it. You might even be worse if you go use it. But we still want you to go use it because it's going to be the absolute best thing possible for you. See, we've reached the point in the Sermon on the Mount in the Beatitudes where Christ has now basically said this. Right? He said, what I am preaching is the absolute best thing for you. It is what you need and there's only one way to go. Just like Apple with iTunes is the only way to put things on this device, right? This is the only way to go. But as we reach the last beatitude, he drops the bomb on him. He says, this is the one way to go. It's going to be the absolute best thing for you. And we've got to this point. Blessed are, blessed are, blessed are, right? What was yesterday's? Anybody remember? Blessed are what? The peacemakers, right? Blessed are those who make peace. Blessed are the pure heart. Blessed are the merciful. We've gone through all this, and we reach the end. And what's he say? Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. He's saying go buy the iPod because it's the best thing for you. It's the absolute thing that you 100% need in your life. But you know what? If you go buy it, you're going to be persecuted for it. You're going to be persecuted for doing it, right? Because see, what it is is, 
the Sony Walkman and the Sony Discman. See, that's the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Jewish leaders. That's the way it had always been done. That's the way that people knew. That's the way that people were used to, right? That's who were, the, the way they were comfortable with. And Christ is coming along with this new thing that people aren't really sure of. People don't really understand what it is yet. A select small group of people understand what it is, but the masses don't, right? When this came out, people didn't know what it was. I remember selling cell phones when the first iPhone came out. The first thing I thought is, no one is going to buy this. I was one of those that no one is going to buy this. No one is going to want only 500 songs on a phone with a battery that might last four hours. Because, guys, the first iPhone, that's what it was. All right? And let's remember also that you didn't have all these unlimited data plans. I know my first data plan was 500 megabytes. And I was paying like 20 some dollars a month for it. And I thought I was, woohoo! I can read my email on my phone, no pictures, but I can read the text in my email on my phone, yes. See, that's what he's talking about here. And then he goes on, blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. You're going to own the newest thing. You're going to have the newest thing, right? But not only are you going to be persecuted for having it, you're also going to be slandered for having it. You're going to be talked about in a false way for having it. You're going to be made fun of for having it. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Right? Rejoice in being exceedingly glad. Now, once again, every one of the Beatitudes so far has been completely opposite of what earthly thinking is, right? Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the peacemakers. That's not humanistic. That's not the way the, our minds work. That's not the way humans think or act, right? But now, all of a sudden, he drops the ultimate contradiction on them. Rejoice. And be exceedingly glad. What are they rejoicing in being exceedingly glad for? For people who are persecuting them and for people who are accusing them falsely. Right? Yes, be happy that people are doing this to you. Don't get upset when it happens to you. Why? Because they did it to the prophets also. They did it to Elijah. They did it to Abraham. They did it to Jacob. They did it to... Jeremiah, they get it to Daniel, they get it to Ezekiel. They did it to every one of them. Some of you are know you're studying Nehemiah on Sunday mornings at one of your churches, right? They definitely did it to Nehemiah. And Christ is saying, rejoice in the fact that it's happening to you. Why? Why? Because what we'll read a little bit later is, he'll go on to say, they do it to me too. They do it to me too. And it's the sign that you're doing things right when they do it to you. It's the sign that you're living how you're supposed to be living when they do it to you. Why? Because you're going against exactly what the world doesn't want you to be doing. You're going against exactly what the world says is supposed to be right in their eyes. And he says rejoice. Rejoice in doing that. Don't shy away from it. There's a story of a person who's a Christian and goes to start a new job, and he starts the new job, and first day of work, he's there, and there's just people cursing all around them and telling them fil telling filthy jokes and putting down God and making fun of the Bible and stuff like that. And he gets home and his wife says, well, honey, how was your first day? And he says, man, it went great. They never knew it would have known I was a Christian. That's not what we're supposed to do, right? We're supposed to let everybody know we're a Christian, no matter 
if we're rejoiced, if we're reviled and persecuted or not. The fear isn't supposed to be there from the world. The fear should be you're not letting people know. You're not telling people. Carrie, you look like you had a question. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. Rejoice and be glad in your faith. Rejoice in the knowledge of where you're going. Because what's he say? For great is your reward in heaven. You remember a few weeks back, we looked at the five crowns you can get in heaven or you can earn in heaven, right? And one of them was what? The crown of the one who was persecuted while on earth. The crown of the one who was martyred while on earth. He's basically telling them, you're going to die for following me. Right? In 2001, I know I wouldn't have bought this if somebody would have said, you know what? Go ahead and buy it. You're going to love it. But eventually you're going to die because you bought it. Is that a sales pitch anyone's going to follow? No, of course not. But Christ is standing there. Remember, he's got his 12 disciples, because that's who he was originally preaching this to, right? But then the what? The multitudes is the word that's used. People who might not have ever heard his message before. And this is his sales pitch to come and join him. Do everything exactly the opposite the world says. And oh, and by the way, when you do it, they're going to make fun of you, they're going to persecute you, and most likely you're going to die at some point because of it too. Come on and join the team. But you know what? We're going to read later on that many, many, many people did come and join the team because they saw through the lies that the Pharisees and the other leaders were trying to portray. And they saw what Christ was really trying to say. And it wasn't about what goes on in the world here. It, was, it wasn't about following the rules that they wanted followed. It was all about a personal relationship with Christ for eternal life. They didn't understand. They didn't know he was going to be um, crucified. They didn't know what was going to happen to him. They didn't know about the resurrection yet. The only thing they knew was, here was somebody that is offering me hope when no one else will. Here is someone that is saying, I don't have to follow all these rules anymore if I just believe in him. And that's the exact same thing he's saying to every single person today. That's the exact same thing he wants from every single one of you today. If you have not made that decision yet. That's what we want from you. That's what Pastor Tim wants. That's what I want. That's what the board wants. And that's what every single person that's already accepted Christ in this room wants from you. Is to see how important that decision is. Not worrying about what? Being persecuted. Not worrying about being reviled. Simply being in that relationship with Christ. And then what happens when you do it? You are rewarded greatly in heaven.